So before we begin, I just would like to say that you don't need anything for this and some of the other sessions that follow this. So you can sit back, relax. If you want, you can take notes. There will be summaries at the end of each one of these videos. But for now, you can just sit back and just take in some of the things which we're going to discuss. So firstly, let's look at mobile first design. Now, what is mobile first design? Now, the idea of mobile first was first coined by uh, Luke Robluski, who's a design director at Google. The idea is that way back when, designers often designed for the larger screen possible. Then when they went down to say like a, a laptop screen, they would condense the UI without really adjusting or thinking about how it would fit in that screen. When you get to tablets, again, you'd see UI just being squished rather than redesigned because it was an afterthought. And finally for mobile, it was a mess. So with mobile first, what you do is you design the mobile first, the experience first. So you start considering what's the most important things on screen? What's the most important call to actions? What's the most important UI? So we have bottom navigation, which is quite common, or navigation at the bottom of the screen, partly because for ergonomics, so it's because people hold devices, um, generally speaking, their thumb is at the bottom, so therefore they can actually navigate the site much more easier. Second reactions are quite commonly hidden away in a hamburger menu or like a navigational drawer. So you have the mobile design. Then once you scale up, you can start adapting the UI. So in this instance, you can see the image now has been shifted to the right. Uh, we still have bottom navigation because again, it's much more ergonomic for these devices which are handheld. Uh, once we get to say the laptop screen, we adapt the UI again. This time we're showing all the navigation. We have much more space for the content. But as previously the, the original design had navigation on the right hand side, again, because of the limitations of space, we may allow more breathing space for the navigation to appear completely across the bottom. And finally, in this case, the largest widescreen design, again, much more space for the text. Uh, navigation is now aligned with the logo. And again, you can see that the UI and the design start to work because we're adapting the, the, the UI for each screen size. And this is like a concept of mobile first and responsive web design as well. So mobile first, what that does is it forces us to focus on the key features, think about the main call to action and design for ergonomics. Because mobile experiences, most users will actually experience apps and websites on mobiles first, it is quite important. There is a large market for this. So let's look at some comparisons. So this is like Virgin Atlantic. What you can see is that when you're designing for a mobile first experience, the key features are always highlighted, as I mentioned before. So the most important things you can see is like someone making a booking, looking at their existing bookings, checking in, logging in, and then some information about maybe the rewards programs that they have. That's the key things that they want the users to do. When you translate it to the desktop version of the site, or in this case, the laptop rather, you can see that there are other navigation items, but still the key things are still highlighted. You can do more, as in visibly see more, in an instance, but the most key things, the primary actions are still there and they're still highlighted. As a matter of fact, I usually find that the mobile versions of these sites are actually much more easier to use because the key things, the main features of the app are really prominent. So that's basically what mobile first really promotes. If we take a completely different type of uh, site. This is BBC Sport. Again, primary story, really prominent. Secondary stories are uh, much more smaller, naturally. But the interesting thing is the navigation. You still highlight maybe some of the most important or perhaps most commonly seen or used sections of the site or app. You demonstrate that there are other sections on the mobile experience and search is much more condensed. But then when you go to the laptop experience, there's much more space, much more navigation items visible. But you can see when you compare the laptop and mobile experience, what sections are highlighted and what are prominent. That's what you really want to focus on, really highlighting and elevating the most primary actions first and then having the secondary actions second. One last thing about mobile design in general is that there are different platforms. So this is YouTube on Android and YouTube on the web. It's always important to lean on the platform as much as possible. Where there are guidance such as the material design guidelines or iOS has like its uh, UI guidance, really look at those things to use the existing UI patterns that they have. You can see that there are there will always be differences across different platforms. That's fine and acceptable. So try and lean on the platform as much as possible. So just as a summary, um, always start with your mobile designs first. That will allow you to focus on the main key features. And then finally, always think about the platform that you're designing for.